Welcome everyone to your favorite trio. I know you're excited to see us. It's your host with the most. I actually never knew what that meant when I heard people say it. What, what does that actually mean? But whatever. I'm just trying to confuse you guys and distract you guys from my hair. Typically, I come on here and I say I'm uh, Don. Not to confuse myself with Don King. My hair is a lot more lavish, but clearly it's not tonight. So we're going to uh, distract you from that and just dive right into our, 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 our trio and allow them to introduce themselves. Nick, up first. Yeah, Nick Taylor, baby. You know, I'm still here, rocking on the mic like I always do. Um, former D1 basketball player. I used to average 32 points a game, minus 31. Um, <laughs> former professional NFL player, CFL player, three-time Great Cup champ. Um, been around the world, baby. Oh, 4-2 speed. I'm fast as fuck. Go ahead. You don't really still run a four two, do you? Uh, four three one. That's, that's pretty damn fast, still. <laughs> My name is Rudy Rodriguez Shomont. Um, I was Nick's travel basketball coach. I wrote for the Miami Herald and Sun Sentinel for many many years, and founded Inside the U dot com, which is part of now part of twenty four seven Sports. I'm no longer with Inside the U, but uh, I was one of the founders of it. And I just want to chime in real quick. I want to thank everybody who has subscribed and been watching our videos. You know, so don't forget to hit the subscription button on the on the bottom corner of the screen and we will have all of our social media names in the description. So please follow us, tag, share and uh, help us grow this channel. We, we greatly appreciate you. OK, shout out to Rudy and his Dawson's Creek Disney moment. We all appreciate that. Bring the family in. We're going to dive right in, guys. Uh, if wait, you wait, share... wait, Donald. Donald. Yes. What's going Ooh. on? You look, you look, you look like you've been through a day. Wow, wow! As I'm trying to uh, distract the viewers from my appearance, uh, thank you for that, Nick. Uh, you are a Rhodes Scholar and my favorite comrade. With that being said, we're gonna just dive right in for you guys. This is our Super Bowl edition. I know you guys are excited for the big game that's happening on Sunday, and we're gonna dive right in. This might be a little. Some people may say, "Really? Is that a topic, Don? Really?" But I, I'm going to go there. Who would you rather have in this game as your quarterback? Brock Purdy or Patrick Mahomes? And I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to chime in first. I, I I would want Brock Purdy. That's going to be a, a little far-fetched for me to say because I'm a Minnesota Vikings fan. I shouldn't root for anything in the NFC. Shout out to my brother Ace. He's a diehard 49ers fan. But Brock Purdy didn't get his chance last year. People forgot he got hurt in the beginning. What if he didn't get hurt? Do they make it to the Super Bowl? Do they win the Super Bowl? Is it the start of Brock Brady? Like, wh what? We, we don't know. We don't know. And I feel like he came back this year and it feels like the Spurs in 2013 or 14. They lost that year against the Miami and they came back with a vengeance. I feel I feel like he's on his Spurs mission right now. I really, really do. The kid has confidence. Their defense is stacked. Their old line is really good. And when he gets rolling, if he gets a lead, <laughs> if he, that kid gets a lead, he has all the confidence in the world. So I'm my pick is Brock Purdy. I like to see the kid succeed. That I don't have um, Kansas City Chiefs fatigue like my my brother says, comrade Rudy. I don't have Kansas City Chiefs uh, fatigue. Great players are great players, and I like to see him succeed. But since I feel something about Brock, Kyle Shanahan, those boys, uh, I've always been a fan of Debo Samuel, George Kittle. I would love to see him in a Minnesota Vikings jersey. Uh, shout out to my GM over there. Do something. And, uh, yeah, I'm going with Purdy. What do you guys think? You, you said who, we, who would we rather have at quarterback? Correct. I correct. Think the correct answer only could be Pat Mahomes. You'd be a fool to say Brock Purdy. So I guess you're a fool. Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback in the league, arguably in the GOAT conversation. And you're going to tell me that you want Brock Purdy. I want the team that he has around him. Yes, yeah, sure. That's a great thing to say. But do I want, if I had to choose between Brock Purdy and Patrick Mahomes as a quarterback? I'm going Patrick Mahomes. You can give me Brock Purdy, Brock Lesnar, Brock Marion. It don't freaking matter. 
I'm getting Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> so you can add all those people together, but Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback. He's proven that he's been to the last 98 conference championship games. <laughs> Nobody else goes there. It's called the Patrick Mahomes Invitational, for God's sake, because he's that dang good. Even when we doubted him at the worst time, we thought that he couldn't make it. I have a it's a post on ESPN, and some person picked the Chiefs to go to the Super Bowl and win against the Cowboys. And I got on that post and I initially said, get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here. Because there's no way that this team with this receiving core is going to make it to the, to the Super Bowl and win it. And then every week they win it and these people on because that, that post got over 4,000 likes. So a lot of people agree with me. But then you have the Chiefs fans that come at me every week. They win. Oh, dumbass. Corn, corn ball. Goofball. You don't know shit about football. Look at us now. And I was like, I didn't say that y'all were going to beat the Dolphins. So that was my, my initial statement. And they came back the next week. And they smacked. And, well, and they beat the Bills. And they wrote me again. Ha, ha, ha. Dummy. I said, it said they're going to win the Super Bowl. I'm not the dummy. They're not going to make it. They're not with that team. Not with that receiving court. They came back and they beat the Ravens. And they did enough on the offensive side to get it done because the Ravens was that terrible. And these fans came at me again. And I said, well, I got one more week. <laughs> one more week. <laughs> one more week to be right because they're going to be on my neck again, bro. And I can't let that happen. But I know one thing I'm not doing is betting up against Patrick Mahomes again. You won't you won't make a fool of me. What's the song? That's you made a fool of me. Tell me why they he won't get me again. I will not bet against Patrick Mahomes because he's the best. Um Bob Purdy is playing awesome and I have no problem with him, but you said pick one, not the team. And if we're going to pick one and not the team, then I'm going with Patrick Mahomes. Put Patrick Mahomes on the 49ers team and what we're saying now. So you're telling me to pick the quarterback or you want me to pick the team, Donald? I'm sticking with my first question, and that's the quarterback. Uh, well, let's well. allow Rudy to, to have a rebuttal, agreeance. Just a I'm trying, I'm trying to find the actual post because I was on that same exact post. Yeah, really and, right. and, and, and it was done by Bill Barnwell of ESPN. Um, I thought he was out of his damn mind. Um, I mean, he had the Cowboys in there as well, so I thought he was completely off the wall because I did not think the Cowboys were going anywhere and they were going in the first round, which is – I didn't think the Dolphins would beat the Chiefs, but I thought Buffalo would beat the Chiefs. And, and I definitely thought Baltimore would beat the Chiefs. And the, one, <laughs> and the one common factor in all of that was that I don't think they won those games because of Patrick Mahomes. I think they won those games because their defense – played really, really well, and made some big-time plays. I'm taking Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy, through the course of this season, people are using history as their determiner. And they're saying, okay, Brock, Patrick Holmes, yeah, he's the best quarterback in football. But we're not talking about the best quarterback. We're talking about this game. And Brock Purdy has been more successful in these playoffs than Patrick Mahomes has. He has taken two game-winning drives in the fourth quarter in games they were trying. They were down 24-7 to Detroit. They were down against uh, Green Bay. That game, that Green Bay game, we thought Green Bay was going to run away with that game the way it was looking. And he brought them back. So he's not only not had the lead, but he's come back in both of these playoff games with some exceptional performances. Throughout this season, Patrick Mahomes has been okay. His numbers are less than Purdy, passing yards, yards per, per, per catch or yards per attempt, lower QBR, lower quarterback rating, less touchdowns, more interceptions. He has not had as good a season as Brock Purdy has had, period. It's, it's a fact. It's not, a, not an opinion. This is data-driven fact. Now, I understand that many people would – most people would say Patrick Mahomes. But for this game – Brock Purdy, we don't know what would have happened last year. I think they would have beaten the Eagles if he had not gotten hurt. That's my belief. And, I mean, you know, obviously the, the, the Niners weren't going to win with their running back playing quarterback. But now he's here, and his team believes in him. <clears throat> um, 
Yeah, he does have weapons, but that dude made plays. He made plays with his legs. I remember Nick last week saying he looked like Lamar Jackson. Those legs made plays, and he had to make – he was, what do you call it? A game changer. Not a game manager, a game changer. So, yeah, I expect Brock Purdy, Purdy to play exceptionally well. I expect the defense to play really well. I expect the San Francisco 49ers to win this game. If the Chiefs win this game, it will not be because Patrick Mahomes is special. It'll be because their defense is dominant. Okay. So, so, and I think for the Niners to win, Brock Purdy has to be special because the Chiefs' defense is flipping really damn good and has been carrying them the entire season. Okay. Call me crazy, Kansas City fans. I'll take it. I don't give a shit. You give me the, the Sunday's game, I'm taking Brock Purdy. I think he's going to make the plays. And I think he's going to win this game for the 49ers. Okay. My rebuttal to what you just said was you said that Brock Purdy played better than Patrick Mahomes in these playoffs. And he came back in those situations. I could argue and say that they were in those situations because of Brock Purdy. Really? Tell me why. Tell me why. He had interceptions. He had. How many? Enough. Enough that they were losing. So, So one. 24-7, 24-7, okay. He had, he had one in two games. Okay. He had one in two he games. He didn't sustain any drives early on. A okay. lot of him not finding his players, not making the right mm-hmm. read. A lot of that was on him. And then another thing that you said was, well, he's been playing well in, Brock, in, in Patrick Mahomes. For this game, Patrick Mahomes has not been playing so good. But you also said that their defense has been better. And they've been one of the lights-out defense in the league. They literally are right behind – Baltimore in defensive points per game. But you know what? They're better in yards per game than Baltimore was. So you could arguably say that their defense was better than Baltimore, who was historically good. And that's who Purdy has to go against. Not That's not who Mahomes has to go against. Mahomes has to go against Chase Young, who has been, hmm, I'll say not as So you're, 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 pick, you're, picking, you're picking one player. You're not saying – Bosa, no, 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 no. Warner, no, 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 no. Greenlaw. No, no, no. But, yeah. Oh, you name those players, but oh, he, he's throwing against he's throwing against their secondary, and their secondary is he's not. He's been it's, throwing swing passes the entire playoff. Yeah, secondary is not really good, even though I could argue you could say that the the, the Chiefs receivers aren't that good. Scantling can run by somebody. Will he catch it? Hmm, I don't know. And Hell, if he can't, and if he can't catch it this I, Sunday. Then I what? Need, I just need him to be above average one more day of the year. After that, you can go back to being subpar. And then you still have Kelsey, who came back to dominance last game. Will he do that against the 49ers linebackers? I don't know what their game plan would be against him and how would they devise a plan against him. You, you know what my plan would be. But double him. Double him. Oh, and you know what, what else it would be? What it would be? Helmet under chin. Oh, my gosh. Oh, sorry. Oh, Lord have mercy. So, like I said, they're going against the Chiefs defense. So if we're going to put it in that scenario, then Purdy is going up uh, uphill battle. So I'm definitely going to take Mahomes. And you said that Purdy used his legs. Mahomes been doing that every playoffs, every year. Every time they need him, he takes off and make a big run. So I expect him to step up in this game and do it again. Do Listen, I-, I will say this, man. With the dad bod, he be moving. Patrick <laughs> Mahomes finds a way to make plays with his legs, and you know, whenever he gets close to the sideline, he skirts it and waits for someone to hit him to draw a fake fifteen yard penalty. We know he does that historically, and he's done it all year. Just so you know, the San Francisco 49ers defense has given him seventeen point five points per game. The Chiefs are at seventeen point three. This is for the season. They're very close in yards, very close in points per game. So these are two excellent defenses. So whichever but they team wins, in the air. Uh, maybe so, but I would also say they have better weapons on offense than the Kansas City Chiefs. That's true. And there's going to be there, there's going to be plays that those guys can make that I don't know that the Chiefs can make. So okay. yeah, this is a, this obviously this is a team situation. It's still a team game, but for this game, I would take Brock Purdy, and I'm going to take and I and I would put money on it because I believe the Niners are going to win this game by 27 to 17. Sturdy Purdy. Interesting. Hey. Interesting. With that being said, it's, with that being said, guys, 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 we're going to go into topic two. Um, to piggyback off the quarterback play, uh, what coach do you trust the most? And the reason I wanted to bring up this topic, 
I think we would um, all agree on this one. We 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 we've had a couple of app episodes where you guys have blatantly called OCs and DCs imbeciles. You have uh, challenged their manhood. You have challenged their intellect. So, with that being said, what 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 coach? What, what coach do you trust in this game? Who are you rocking with? Who would you want to play for on Sunday? Man, this is a good one, man. But it's really not that good. Um. The obvious answer is Andy Reid. That's who I'm rolling with. That's who I'm rocking with. He's been in this game. He's won it. But like I say, it only takes for you to be good on one more night of the season. All it takes is one more night of the season to be better than the other coach. Have your 15 first plays that you that you dry, that you planning right now. Every coach has a 15 first plays that that they have planned. Have those be the best plays of the season. But I'm going with Andy Reid because can I trust Kyle Shanahan? 28 to 3. Y'all remember that? That was Kyle Shanahan. But Kyle Shanahan wasn't the defensive coordinator. He had 28 points. They should have won that game and if they didn't score another point with another yard. Um, no, his play calling goal. was horrible. You were going Don't against the game. And, and they also fumbled. They had, they had a fumble as well in there, right? There was they a fumble a, in there, right? They had a yeah. fumble in there, but Devonta, Devonta Freeman was killing Give him the ball. They went away mm-hmm. from that the whole second half. They put the ball in your your guy who's better than Ben Roethlisberger, Matt Ryan hands most of the game, and they could not sustain drive. They started blowing the game. They got tight, but all they had to do was run the ball. They couldn't stop Demonte. He was running rampant the whole night. Nobody could stop him. But you know what? Kyle Shanahan. What Kyle Shanahan also did against the Chiefs. He blew another one. Can I blame that solely on him? No, I don't have to blame that solely on him. I could blame that on his quarterback who missed a wide-open throw for a wide-open receiver. But he's not here nor there. He won't be playing in this game. They have sturdy purdy. But still, I'm going to have to go with Andy Reid because he's a champion. He's a two-time champion. He's been in the Super Bowl a total of four times. Kyle Shanahan has been there also. But you have to go with Andy Reid in this situation, man. He's a proven winner. He keeps winning his game. He keeps getting to the situation. He keeps finding a way to, to get his team over the hump. Kyle Shanahan hasn't done that yet, and I'm not looking forward to him doing it. Well, I am looking forward to him doing it because, Lord have mercy, give me strength. Do not let the Swifties win a championship. Nothing will make my day more gay unless the Swifties go away. Nothing will make my day more gay until the Swifties go away. I said it. Go look at the dictionary of the word gay. I'm happy. I know what I, I know what it means. I'm happy guys. Don't take I know what it means. Derogatory form. Because I love all my people. <laughs> I love all my people. All my people love me. But Lord, don't let them win. But I gotta take Andy Reid and Mahomes in this situation. Um, did you say that so did Matt Ryan play poorly in the Super Bowl? I just want to refresh oh, that look, that I'm, comment. Okay. I, I, I just want to confirm no, what no, you he, just said. Did he didn't he play, play poorly in the Super Bowl. He didn't play poorly, but how many points did he put up in the second half? Okay, so we're going to go by points in the second half. Okay, Matt Ryan I mean, in that game. You, 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 you just made a statement that Matt Ryan kept throwing the ball. Matt Ryan was 17 for 23 for 284 yards. Two touchdowns and no interceptions in that game. So your Ooh, commentary about how he played – how many times did, did Freeman touch the ball in the second half? That's I don't remember. I, I'd have to Google that and look that up and prepare for that, but I didn't know. But I can easily find out how many how many yards Ryan did, and he only had six incomplete passes in a full game that they were up twenty eight three in. That's neither here nor there. That is, it's there. I would no no because you know what you made a statement that they stopped running the ball. I don't remember they the game like the they, but, okay. Well then then he would have had a lot more passes. So I'd have to actually fact check. Well, that. not really. You could. I'd have. How many how can I, that? 23 pass attempts. He was 17 for 23. So if he was throwing the ball the whole game. How many times was he sacked? He was sacked five times. Back. He was sacked five times. So, it was, so there was 28 pass attempts. That's Are you too, serious? Too many for that situation. How many were Patrick, those? Okay, uh, okay. Have, when, they uh, counted, when they needed to sustain drive, when they needed to keep Tom Brady off the field. I'll, I'll, I, I will get back to you when I do some actual research yeah. on the comment you made because – Three no, I, again, you're, you're, you know what? I'm sorry. You, you, I'm, sorry, I'm, sorry okay. I'm sorry. Again, you. I'm going to let you talk. You just harped on Patrick Mahomes for scoring all his points in the first half last week and not scoring again. 
Yeah, and and everyone was saying he played an amazing game, no, which I didn't. I, they no, they said he, they said he. No, no, no. I watch daytime TV because I'm actually at home all day. So I watch. I watch. Okay, I don't think he played that well. Yeah. Matt Ryan played in the Super Bowl way better than Patrick Mahomes played last week versus the Ravens. Period. They were up twenty eight three. They scored twenty eight points. Yes, do they need to score more points? Just like the Lions need to score more points, and, and they didn't. You know, it happens. And I, and, but Matt Ryan played a better Super Bowl than Pat Mahomes played last week by a mile. That said, yeah, I, I, I'd have to go check to see this, the play by play to check it. I would still take Andy Reid. Um, I think Kyle Shanahan's a great coach. Yeah. He's been to the Super Bowl. Yes. They were the Super No, 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 that was his, he has been, he played, he the Chiefs four years ago. Yes. All right. Blue. So they, they lost that game mm-hmm. because Garoppolo overthrew yeah. a guy by, by, by about two yards. That would have been a touchdown, right? Yep. If I recall that one correctly. Yeah. Yeah. So he's been there before. It's an experience that he will try to obviously fix. Um, but yeah, Andy Reid has Andy Reid's a great coach. <laughs> like, like let's not I can't, he's a great, great coach. And the fact that he has helped lead these guys to this point this year is rather amazing to me. Um and he's in a and he's in a game plan ex- exceptionally. Question is, can Kyle Shanahan come back with the gadgets that they they run, the the good version of Mike McDaniel, <laughs> you know, and not just throwing the same shit over and over again. I expect Shanahan to have a lot of gadgets in there to try to have some misdirection and, and all that stuff because they're going to need it, especially dealing with um, that type of defense because that defense comes hard, you know. But, yeah, I, I would take in, I would certainly take Andy Reid if I have to pick one of the two coaches. I think they're both great coaches. Um, I would not use the Atlanta Falcons game as my judgment for Kyle Shanahan because they blew a 28-3 lead with what 18 minutes to go. Oh. That is not an offensive issue. That is a that is wasn't that, Dan Quinn was the defensive coordinator, right? And he just got hired as a head coach again. Like it just that that loss was on Dan Quinn way more than it was on Kyle Shanahan. Quinn was, was the, no, it was Quinn was what Quinn was the head coach, right? No, it wasn't Quinn. Who was the head coach? I, I can't recall who their coach was. And, you know, let me. Uh, what, was, what, what was it? 28. Was it? Was that 2018? Was it Dude Smith? I mean, I forgot his name. Uh, that was a, that was their coach this year. Dan Quinn was the head coach. Dan Quinn? Yeah. I'm, uh, no, what year was that? Was that 19? That no, was 19, right? Yeah. Or was that 17? I've lost track of years. <laughs> Jesus Christ. No, it's 16, because that's when that's when home, homeboy Matt Ryan won the MVP. Um, Dan Quinn was the head coach. Um, and he was also in charge of their defense. So, you know, he was their defensive. He's a defensive coach. So, yeah, I, I think that uh, Dan Quinn had to own that a little bit more than Kyle Shanahan. But, yeah, you want to score more points. But I would, I would take Andy Reid. I'm not going to argue that. The guy's won two Super Bowls. He's been to four. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's well, been to, he's been to what eight? No, I'm sorry, ten conference, conference championships game. The mm-hmm. conference championship games. He went to four with the Eagles. Uh, you know, he's been with, to six with the Chiefs. I, I mean, guy's a great, great coach, man. Can't argue that. I, I would take Andy Reid as well. Awesome guys. Uh, it looks like did did we all just agree? I don't really like yeah. the feeling. Well, you you didn't say what you would take, so I, I on, guess Andy. you agree. <laughs> 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 Andy, Andy, come on now. Let's 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 not let's not ask those questions. But um, we're gonna get into one of the most uh, colorful topics of our our shows every day. I think Rudy gets excited for it, like it's an upcoming bout, like he's gonna fight the world. So I know you guys are super excited about this. We're gonna just jump right into it, and everyone's gonna just you know, we're gonna allow the young man to come to the podium and give off his rants. Rudy's rants, guys. This will be a surprising rant. I don't know if you actually read my text in the group chat. Um, I don't know if you actually. Put, I don't know if you paid attention to it. I only sent it to you. I sent um, so many. I sent so many. Oh, okay. Well, this will be different because I don't typically watch this sport. Um, however, I watch all sports. I just don't watch this sport all that much because uh, I think it's rather unentertaining for the most part. But there is one basketball player in the women's game that is must-see TV, and her name is Caitlin Clark for the Iowa Hawkeyes. 
Caitlin Clark is the best female basketball player I've ever seen in the last, when I say, I can't say I've ever seen, I've seen since Cynthia Cooper. So with the Houston, Cynthia Cooper's better than Diane Taurasi, in my opinion. Cynthia Cooper. Maya you, Moore? You, Cynthia, Cynthia Cooper, Was they it? won the first four championships with the Houston Comets when the WNBA started. I believe it was the first four. Less talent also. But, but, but Cynthia Cooper was unbelievable. And her teammate was Cheryl Swoops. Do you know who Cheryl Swoops was? Yeah. Okay. Cheryl Swoops. So that said, I think Caitlin Clark was the is the best player I've seen in 20 years. I think she's better than Diane Taurasi. Like, I don't even think that's close. Caitlin Clark has range to half court. She looks like Steph Curry out there. It's ridiculous. Like, if they want to have a real competition on three-point shooting at the All-Star game, it should be against Caitlin Clark, not against – um, whatever, Sabrina Ionescu. Mm-hmm. Now, that being said, Caitlin Clark is about to break the women's all-time scoring number, Mark. That was uh, you know, set by Kelsey Plum, who plays for Las Vegas Aces. Cheryl Swoops was recently on Gil's Arena and made some comments that I find to be borderline detestable because they're flat out fucking lies. If you're gonna come on someone's podcast, you should at least be prepared because you knew you were gonna say this. You knew you wanted to, you knew you were, you knew you wanted to say this because obviously they have you there to talk about women's basketball, right? Yeah. It makes sense. So you would think that a sport that most men realistically don't give two shits about, as a female who was in the Hall of Fame, and arguably one of the greatest women's basketball players of all time, because Cheryl Swoops was a star, would be praising these young women, these talents that are coming out of college, because they're drawing Angel Reese, Clark, all these different girls who are drawing eyes, those two being the, the, the main two that are drawing the eyes of the public. But let's not bullshit ourselves. Clark is a special talent. Mm-hmm. She comes on there and flat out fucking lies and says, I think when you set a record, it's only a record if you set it in the amount of games that the other person set it in. I don't think she should get the credit because if she said, you know, there was a COVID year, so she gets a fifth year and all that bullshit. Cheryl, Caitlin Clark's played four college seasons, Mm -hmm. not five. Kelsey Plum played 139 games to set her record. Caitlin Clark has played 123. She's going to break the record in the next three games. She's averaging 32.4 points per game. And you're going to sit here on a podcast like Gil's Arena, which has 500,000 subscribers? Mm-hmm. and spread misinformation that you know is not true? Or maybe you don't know. Maybe you're just too lazy and mm-hmm. don't look it up. But if you're going to say something, at least look the shit up, memorize it, and, and not lie about somebody. If you don't like Clay- Caitlin Clark for whatever reason, and I can venture to guess to, to know why, just say it. Have the balls. Whoa, she so you don't. To say it, the ovaries or whatever, to say it. To sit here and lie about this young woman is fucking bullshit. Caitlin Clark is going to break this record. She's going to smash this record. If they get to 139 games, she's going to beat this record by 300 points. And guess what? Caitlin Clark could actually come back for a fifth year because of COVID. She's not. She's the number one pick in the draft next year. Albeit she probably makes more money at Iowa than she will in the WNBA. Higher field goal percentage. Less games, higher three-point percentage. She also averages eight assists per game. Then she, then the, the, the moderator, I think his name is Josiah. Josiah, this yeah. dude says she's only played four seasons. And this woman doubles down. She doubles down, does not admit she was wrong. She's now been called out by him. Because Gilbert, Gilbert when, when Gil was told this, he's like, yeah, I agree with you. Because, you know, Gilbert Arena's probably never seen one woman's basketball game in his goddamn life. 
and only has Lexi on that show because he wants to have a female audience for, for women's basketball because he doesn't watch women's basketball. Let's not lie to ourselves. Nick, you were a men's basketball player in college. How many women's games did you actually go to? No, no, no. I went to I went to a few. No, they, they, they you were there for four. You were there for four years. How many games did you go to? Ten? Uh, probably about twenty. Uh, no, I went to and they, and they would have had 120 games in that in that time period, and you were go for free. Yeah, you go yeah. for free. Sometimes would you, I, would you would you have bought a ticket? Would you have bought a ticket? No, you would not have bought a ticket, bro. Stop. Don't even think about that and twist your eyes. And you would not have bought a ticket, bro. My high school basketball team, I would have because they were really good. Well, high school, yeah. <laughs> but 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 to do that and then say, hey, well, really, yeah, I wouldn't have bought a ticket to my college team on my boys basketball <laughs> team ticket. I know. So you wouldn't have bought a women's ticket either. Exactly. So that being said, then she doubles down and says, well, Caitlin takes 40 shots a game. The fuck you talking about? Forty shots a game. She averages less shots than Kelsey Plum averaged in college. Why are you lying? You know people don't like her. Just Why are you lying? Who lot. doesn't like Caitlin Clark? A lot Cheryl of Swoops clearly doesn't like her. A lot of people, yeah. I have not heard that. I mean, look, I know they had the thing with Reese and, and Clark in the national championship last year. Whatever, that's all good. I have not. I have not heard anybody speak with this level of of. of I don't know what the word is, like vitriol or vile about about this woman. This girl is bawling. She is a killer out there. And you're going to sit here and flip and lie about her and make some shit up because you don't like her? but you Because you know how it goes. People are automatically going to believe that she looked this up, reviewed this, and knows it to be true. But the reality is, if Caitlin Clark was in year five, the national media would have told you a thousand times already. It's bullshit what she did. She should be ashamed of herself. And to my, in my opinion, she has, she just, she lessened her. She clearly has no character, but she lessened what I thought. I, I mean, I thought she was amazing when she played, but she lessened herself in, in, in a way that you're demeaning a future star female basketball player who is going to help build your sport. Cause the reality is, I have not been to a women's basketball game since the Miami Soul. And you could not pay me to go to a women's basketball game until they drop those rims to nine and a half feet or nine feet where they can start dunking the ball because the games are fucking boring. And you're and the one girl or the two girls, but the one main one that makes dudes watch, it's not Angel Reese. It's Caitlin Clark because she can do the shit that dudes do. Am I wrong? If you you will watch because of that, you will watch the tournament well, because of Caitlin Clark knocking down thirty five foot jump shots. The game that I watched this year has been South Carolina and LSU. Oh, South Carolina! The South Carolina. I watched that game too, and South Carolina won that game, and that's a great game. But as a player, one player, you're watching that girl, and for her to shit on her like that publicly and do it and lie about it is bullshit. I'm done. Wow. Um, there's a lot to unpack there. Thankfully, that's not my job. That's the viewer's jobs. To Imagine, I talked about women's basketball. And uh, and to uh, send your vitriol at him on the Come On Now podcast on all platforms. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to go into uh, my favorite segment, personal favorite segment. And I know some of you, you know, get super excited for it. You know, we're going to just... Uh, uh, wait, let me, nice. let me hit you guys with it again. Let me hit you guys with it again. Nice. Oh, all right. Yeah, um, playing with, with, that being, with that being said, we're going to jump into Don's Dimes. It's the part of the show where we don't discuss in pre-production. I come up with a fireside topic, and the guys just have to spit it out. With it being Super Bowl week, and it's a Super Bowl edition, I'm super excited about what most people are super excited about when it comes to the show. You're going to think commercials. <laughs> no, it's the halftime show. Come on now. We, we love the halftime show. 
my dream performer has always been Usher. A fun fact for the viewers and listeners out there, growing up, I was a huge Usher fan, still I am. And my brother nicknamed me Slusher uh, because I wasn't as refined as Usher and I was a little cold. So he called me Slusher and it stuck. And um, uh, to this day, I'm a huge fan of him. And so my question for you guys, if you could have any halftime performer, who would it be? Because I don't actually know Rudy's musical taste. So as as a as a part of the show, I'm going to be very interested to hear who he's going with. I'm going to start. If I could have a, a dream performer, and they've already had Usher this weekend, and I hope he kills it, I would have a dream, smooth R&B halftime show. I'm talking Jodeci, KC, and JoJo. I'm talking Drew Hill. I'm talking Toto. 702, Summer Walker, Bell Biv DeVoe, Nax, Neo, High Five. Nick, I know you like High Five. High, high Five? five. I'm what do you about. like, Five when they hit her out? <laughs> you know, I, have, I have a very sophisticated musical palette, Rudy. And I, I, would, I, would, I would put together about a 30, 40 minute show of just the R&B hits because most nfl fans would actually appreciate these records they're baby boomer generation millennial generation rudy's generation we're not going to age him but these are artists that people would love and i think you know the young tiktokers of the world would appreciate them so i would go if i was the curator for a halftime performance for the super bowl it would be a classic r&b medley of the hits, 80s and 90s, a few 2000s. But yeah, we would be rocking in there. That's just me. Wow. So much to unpack there. Rudy, you going first? Okay, um, shoot. That, you, you can go first. <laughs> you know, if I can handle the pass on this dime right now, so I'm going to have to come up with something on the tip of the top of my head. Man, who I would have went with, man, R.I.P., man. I'm going with somebody who's going to rock the crowd. And he's gonna get everybody hyped. He's gonna get us barking. You, you better not, well, motherfucker! Well, I should have gone first. DMX. Jesus, I was gonna say the same goddamn thing. I'm gonna spit at you, some shit. I'm gonna get at you, fuck it. What's your mind? Stop. Right. That's great. That's great. How many times did I have to play rap? Hey, 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 Nick. The Caucasians love DMX. Bro, he sold, he sold out like the whole tour of like like hundred thousand people out there watching the man. They don't, man, everybody loves the X Man, but he's not alive, so it's a shame. So, who I would have to go with, man? Dang, it's a dime. I'm, I'm gonna catch this one, B. It's it's oh Lord have mercy. I'm gonna go with um. Bad boys, man. I, I I can't stop, won't stop, man. I know. I had, I had to. Sorry. I'm, I'm gonna go with Diddy, man. Diddy in the in the game, man. You talking about? I'm gonna have Little Kim. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna have the whole gang come. I'm gonna have. The, I'm gonna have Mace up there. You know, we we doing all the dances, man. I'm hard on shaking. <laughs> can't stop, won't stop. You know. That's everybody that I want to be a part of. That's my whole group, man. I always said I wanted to be part of the bad boys, man. I always said that. I always tell everybody that, man. I feel like it's a real part of the game, man. I see out there doing my thing with the man, dancing. It can't stop, won't stop. You know, getting down, man. It's a whole group of them that brings amazing music on um, because you definitely got to have my dog, Mary J. Black, come kicking with the, with the boots. And the whole game, I mean, you can, we're going to have R&B, we're going to have rap, you know. We can even let, you know, Mariah got a couple songs with them, so she's going to have to do a little guest appearance with them. Fate Evans going to come on there. You know, hey, hey, man, I, I don't see a group that's a, a team that's better prepared. Now, if they had my guy Biggie with them, we might really turn up a party, but we don't have him. But he's in a couple of verses, and you can still let him rock out. Bad boys for life. That's who I'm rocking with. But after DMX, man. Because we already did Snoop. We did 50 of them. That would have been some good ones. Bruno Mars, that's my guy. 24K. We rocking out. Um, shout out to all the um, 
on the fat girls, man. You know, Bruno loves them. Shout out to them. Um, what? Yeah, man. All the big girls, Gosh. man. love them too, man. So I don't have Bruno, man. <laughs> Bruno, bad boys. That's probably my, my, my two groups that, that I really rock with. Yeah. yeah um, my favorite rapper of all time is DMX. Um, I've been to DM. I went to a DMX concert at Revolution Live in Fort Lauderdale. Um, it was the absolute most awesome, and it was in a small place, so it wasn't a big, big concert hall. It wasn't a, an arena. It was a club, and it was fire. I mean, it took him. He didn't come out to like three thirty in the morning, but he was on. And like, bah. when he. All these people that when they post this shit about when someone dies and they're all so sad and shit and I really don't get like like when Boozer posts about a comic book guy who's 165 years old who passes away and is I'm like, dude, he's 165 years old. Like he's gonna die. It's very sad, but he's old as hell. DMX died at fifty. When DMX died at fifty, I was in fucking tears. And because DMX is for me the greatest rapper that's ever lived. Th- and he doesn't get the credit for what he's done. He don't. He put out album after album that I don't have to skip a song on. It's just, oh, I could play it. Like if I was on a road trip, like Nick could put on R. Kelly for like a hundred straight songs. I know that. And he probably would have picked R. Kelly if he wasn't in prison. Although he picked another guy who's going to go to prison. Um, because clearly you're not watching the news of late because, I mean, you might want to go to that after party with Puffy. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just telling him to come you to the Super Bowl party after that's not. Yeah, don't go to his after party because you might end up like, I don't know. Um, but I could play DMX and drive to freaking Alaska and not change this, not change it, like every album he's got. Because, I mean, I love DMX and I actually bought tickets for his concert that was supposed to happen about two years before he died and he canceled it because mm. he was known for canceling concerts, had the money back in my account. Like what the hell's going on? They canceled the concert. They canceled the damn concert. I was so upset. I was so upset. I mean, I would have rather seen the concert, but yeah, I would be like, are you kidding? Are you kidding? The clean version could be played on TV, but that would have the whole stadium erupting erupting like the i mean it would be a real party up in there now you'd have about probably 50 percent of the white people on television crying about it on the internet like they cry about everything or 50 percent of black folk crying about something like when you see a country music singer or some shit like that someone's always crying well, someone's always crying you like you can't appeal. you can't you can't please everybody like but but it depends so- i guess it would depend on where you're having the, the super bowl at like, well, not, it's, I, it's a Super Bowl. You can play it anywhere and have. No, 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 no. I, I get that. I get that. I get that. And I'm saying, but the best, you know, the best performances are usually like if we're doing it in Cali, we're gonna have Snoop Dogg do it. If we're doing it in Atlanta, well, if you do it in if you do it in New York and, and Met Life, I mean, that would have been unbelievable. I mean, heck, you do it in Vegas. I think it's just as good. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Vegas. Is I, I, you know, anybody there. Donald, you you love Usher. Have you been to see Usher in a uh, residency in Vegas? You should go. I don't yeah. know if he's still there or not. Yeah, Unfortunately, you know, grab no, but I heard it was amazing. But actually, he just announced yeah. that he's taking that tour around. Oh, really? In Miami. So okay. I'm going to see so, um, a, a conservative yeah. about nine times. But I would tell you, right, I would tell you if I can't have DMX, I don't need a whole bunch of groups. I don't need this person, this person. Woo, Tang, woo, Tang, woo, Tang, woo, Tang. I saw Wu Tang Clan perform as well at the James L. Knight Center. I was in row three. I could not hear for two days after that. Man, give me speakers were twenty feet high. Method Man come comes out. I mean, now you might need Mary J. Blige for the one song, but oh my God, I would love this Wu Tang and that would be some shit. If you could bring back Old Dirty Bastard from the Dead as well. Damn. Oh my God, I don't know. We can't do nothing. Our concerts. They're all dead. Well, I mean, I, I would I would take Wu-Tang Clan because, I mean, otherwise I go to MC Hammer because I don't know if you ever seen MC Hammer back in the day, but yeah. MC Hammer in 1991, I saw him in concert at the Miami Arena. He had like 75 people on stage with him. That was the greatest actual show I've ever seen. Like what they did, the performing, 
unbelievable. I know you were just. You know. Oh, by the way, Donald. I like the way you like kiss that. me when we're playing the kissing. <laughs> you surprised me all the time. I didn't think you would know that. Man. I know who high five is. Yeah. That was when I was in school, bro. Yeah. No, I'm I didn't bad boys, man. We going 112. We going black rock. We going a lot. We going a lot. No. We no, going I didn't, I didn't forever, man. We going, me. come on, man. I didn't know if you were going to say uh, Backstreet Boys because you want it that way. I don't, I don't know where you were going to go with this. <laughs> don't I don't know where you were going to go with this, but I'm. I, I, went, I went to school in Little Haiti, bro. Come on. I appreciate the IED. Shout I out to Archbishop Curly in Little Haiti, bro. <laughs> oh, I've been listening. I've been listening to hip hop since NWA. I, I, I was about ten years old. We're gonna cut out of uh, the bus. Naysayers with the I am biased. Naysay. Oh, remember that little Nay? Let the naysayers know. You know that was such a bunch of bull crap. That's not what it means. Stop my pain. You can't tell somebody what it means, Rudy. Exactly. Exactly. But why is the player line of who was it? It was Penix, right? No, it was. Um, <laughs> The Alabama quarterback. It was okay. No row. Yeah, why is he lying? Just say what it means, bro. We all know. Like, come on now. But go ahead. Sorry, man. <laughs> anyway, uh, as we segue off this topic, which was very colorful and exciting and entertaining, you guys kind of threw me for a loop there. Nick, you're gonna make me listen to DMX in the gym tomorrow. You're gonna make me listen. Hey. To DMX. And uh, so yeah, we're gonna segue off to the next topic. This one was a. Uh, Pioneered, I would say, engineered, better term, by Rudy himself. He, uh, we're gonna discuss the top five henchmen of the NBA. Now, if you listen to the term henchman, you're gonna, Donald, what does that mean? It means rough and tough, it means aggressive, it means mean, pit bulls, it means that little thing that bites you. On your leg and won't jump off. Uh, your child can be a henchman. My son is a <sighs> henchman. Uh, I've had a couple of nieces and nephews. Henchman. Your mailman can be a henchman. He just throws your packages wherever the fuck he wants. Anyone can be a henchman. But in this case, we're going to discuss Rudy's top five henchmen in the NBA and why. Rudy, the floor is yours. So th- th- I thought this would be fun to. Huh? Let me name my five first. I know okay. You know. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. At number five, I'm going to go with Udonis Haslam. I'm going to go with somebody who's, you know, in this era or close to this era who who going to give some credit for doing all the dirty work, knocking people out, taking care of his guys, making sure nobody gets effed up. And if we want to take it there, if you go in anywhere in Miami and you with UD, you're not fucking with LeBron, Wade, or nothing because UD going to make sure that everybody's safe and and everything's taken care of. So I'm going to go with UD at five. Anybody opposed to that? No, no, okay. And then after that, I think it's just a bad boy's list. I don't like, <laughs> what What are we talking about here? We got. But you know what? At number four, actually, I, don't, I won't consider him a henchman. But I'm going to say that somebody that you're not fucking with, bro. Um, I don't think he bought enough or did enough, but I knew a lot of people was not fucking with. I know he was at the free throw line, and he told he told uh, the Marcus Cousins, don't fuck with me. Bullies get bullied. I'm going to go with Zebo at four. At number three, I'm going to go with John Sally. John Sally at number three. Just take it care of what he need to take care of. Make sure that nobody mess with Zeke. I mean, at number two, I'm going with Rick Mahorn. <laughs> this is a bad boys list. At number one, I think we all know. No, did I did I skip somebody? You you, you may have because I mean I know you're going to go to Bill and Beer right here. I'm guessing, but because oh, um, you said a bad boys I'm list. I'm going to Oakman. Oakman oh. one. So okay. You know, it was actually supposed to be Lambert at two, Mahorn at three, Sally at no, Sally's not in it. That's what it is. Zebo's at four, Giannis oh. at five. My bad. Sally's not in it. Let him go do his bad boys movies. My bad. I'm sorry, Sally. Um, I got uh, Rick Mahorn at two, and I got no, Oak at one, Lambert <laughs> yeah. at two, Mahorn at three, Zebo at four, 
you did fine. And I'm not putting Rodman in there. I don't think Rodman was a henchman. I think Rodman was just an irritator. He just got on the people's nerves. And he just really didn't like him. He just did irritating stuff. He grabbed the balls, might have rubbed on your butt. <laughs> As you want to I, 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 I just know he's just an irritating, irritating player. You just, um, you want him on your team. You might want to hang out with him after for a little bit, not the whole night, just a little bit. But I wouldn't consider him a henchman. So that's my top five right there. I'm pretty sure Rudy could dive into them more because he's from the 1930s. Yeah, um, I, I actually like that list. Um, you, you, oh, I, snap. I like it. I like it. I mean, I don't. I agree with some of it. I mean, I, if I made it up top ten, I probably had a lot of these guys in there. Okay. Um, but um, I want to start off first with I thought this would be a fun topic. Yeah. Because we're in an era of basketball where they don't exist anymore. And people think like a guy like Draymond Green is a, a henchman or a goon. Draymond Green won't bust a grape. He won't bust a grape. Let someone get in his face, face to face, he will fold. He wants to grab people from behind and sucker punch people with whirly punches and kick people in the balls over and over again. That's not a henchman. That's a fucking pussy. He's a fake. He is what I call a fake goon. Another guy who's a fake goon is Kevin Garnett. He always picked on guys smaller than him. Let him pick up. He never. Now, he made Chris Bosh scared of him because Chris Bosh is a little bit soft. But he wouldn't pick on Udonis Haslam like that. He wouldn't go at Shaq like that. He wouldn't go on any big dude like that. He was always a real tough guy with the little guys. Another guy that I thought was a little bit fake, you know, tough guy was Rasheed Wallace. He was tougher than Kevin Garnett, but he was just a big mouth. Not a lot of he like if there was a guy in those Detroit Pistons teams from the, the early two thousands that you didn't want to fuck with, it was Ben Wallace. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not. Ron, Ron Artest found out the hard way. <laughs> I'm not fucking with Ben. You don't mess with Ben Wallace. That said, I don't think Dennis Rodman is a henchman either. I think he's just an irritating motherfucker. Mm -hmm. Like he he got under Alonzo Mourning's skin. He was mm -hmm. irritating. He wasn't a guy who was gonna get into a fist fight. He would try to make you want to fight him mm -hmm. and then walk away laughing at you because yeah. you just got ejected. Gotcha. And, and he's still in the game. Like, I got your ass. But he, you know, yeah, ba yeah, basically. This was tough for me, and I know I'm taking fucking forever. But I'm gonna tell you right now. My number five is a tough, light-skinned dude who... Jeff Curry. I knew it. He, he, he fits that level of, like, goonish-type behavior on a court. Matt He's Bonner. a t tough son of a bitch. Matt Bonner. He, drove, he drove 95 miles to go punch Derek Fisher in the face because his kids called him. Matt Barnes is a tough motherfucker. Like, he is a, I mean, he ain't big. He's six eight, but he's sl he's skinnier than I'm 255, 260. He's, what, 210? But that dude was tough as shit. Like, he had no fear of anybody. I have so much respect for that guy as a ball player because he wasn't the most skilled. But, man, he got the most, and he was tough. He, he would not back down from anybody. So yeah, I call him my number five henchman. Yeah, you you figured it out as I was talking about. Number four. I'm back and forth on this one, but I got Charles Oakley at number four. Charles Oakley was that that he's like the last of the enforcers type of guy. Cause you'll never see another one like Charles Oakley now. Like ever. Got the, I read something today where he got into two fist fights in one day. In the street, like, what are you doing? He got into a he not he beat up Judge Mathis at a bar. You know the TV judge? Mm, yeah, he beat him up in a bar. <laughs> like, what the hell is like this guy? And you see what happened in the in the arena. I mean, he was a scary dude. He was Jordan's protector mm -hmm. in the eighties. Yeah, and that was a big thing when they traded him. You know, he became Ewing. Guy. You know, he became Ewing's guy. But you know what the funny thing about it was. The New York Knicks had two of those dudes. You're going Mason. And that's my and that's my number three. Anthony Mason. Uh, you know what? I, Anthony I, Mason is the scariest motherfucker to ever play in the NBA. When I did my list, because I had to come up with it quick because it was really Rudy 
idea right here. I said, Anthony makes it. And I'm like, oh. If I'm walking through a dark alley, I want Anthony Mason next to me. Because that dude would scare any, just by how he looked. He yeah. looked petrifying. Yeah, yeah. His eyes, he looked like his eyes were always bloodshot. Like, though his voice. <sighs> like, oh my. And then yeah. when he played for the Heat, I love the guy when he's playing for the Heat. But, but imagine the Knicks had this dude and Oakley at the same damn time. Hey. hey. I agree with you because him and Tyrone Hill was not going to be in any beauty pageants. None, none. <laughs> but that dude, and I, and you know, the funny thing was, I had my first year travel team played against his team, played yeah, against yeah. his son. He was the coach. It was hilarious. I mean, I'm meeting this guy like, guy's the size of him. He's a monster, but he was petrifying to look at. Yeah. I mean, on the floor, like, okay, you could have a layup. If I was me, I'm like, I'm not even getting you. And he's so big and strong, like it's just like hey, petrifying. Jump. Jump shots today. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, bro. Number two is Bill Lambeer. Bill Lambeer didn't care if he got beat up. Yeah. I was that's gonna, the funny thing. That's what he I didn't care. He's one of them. Hit me. Hit me. He didn't care if he got beat up. He, didn't, he got into a fight with Barkley, with every. I think Oakley fought. I think he's fought everybody. I mean, Robert Parrish took a forearm and smashed him over the face, and neither guy got ejected. That's what basketball used to look like. Like, he he wanted you. He he wanted to get into it. Uh, And then he had that ridiculous – I mean, he was a great three-point shooter, too. You know, know, back in the day, like, that was a great three-point shooter. Mm -hmm. But that dude did not care. He was going to protect Isaiah at all times. It It didn't matter. Like, he was always going to protect Isaiah Thomas. And that dude is a tough – he was a t- – couldn't fight a lick, it looked like, but he could, he was a tough motherfucker who didn't care if he got hit. He's the definition of a henchman. Now, this one's going to be funny to you because I sent you a video of this guy earlier today. You never saw him really have to get into it on the court because everybody knew. James Johnson I, and I thought did I, not have to blink. That's why. I was gonna be like, I was, I had him, but I was like, he didn't really get into it, but it's because nobody. He didn't have to. Everyone knows James Johns James Johnson's background. He's a professional kickboxer. He's an undefeated professional kickboxer. There was a story, and it's funny because the video came up today on my feed. I was like, wait, I gotta what? James Johnson beat the shit out of a teammate when he played for the Heat. He beat the shit out of a teammate. I didn't know that, but I, Udonis Haslam, Mike Miller, and and Bam Adebayo were on a podcast, doing a podcast, and Bam is telling the story, and UD is telling the story about how James Johnson had a quick twitch. You could not once you once you once you hit that switch, you could not switch it back. He got into it where a teammate called him a bitch. They would not say who it was, but I'm going to presume it was Hassan Whiteside. I'm like going that. to presume because. I know Goran Dragic would not have done that. No. I know Deion Waiters would not have done that. UD clearly didn't do that, and Bam definitely didn't do that. So I'm going to figure it's a guy of size yeah. and a guy with a mouth. Yeah. And Hassan Whiteside was a complaining-ass bitch himself and always whining, and I have a feeling it was Hassan Whiteside. I don't remember him having black eyes or a busted lip or a busted nose or whatever, but I'm going to tell you right now. They said he called him a bitch. He said, I got you. I'm going to see you after practice. And he whooped his ass next to the locker room for 15 minutes. <laughs> it was, they said it was <laughs> good night. Like oh, just, and had him sniffling and crying. And then they hugged it out like within the, the, before the day was done. And it may have been over with for James Johnson. Probably was it. Maybe that's why Hassan Whiteside was no longer with the Heat very long. I mean, James Johnson left eventually. But there was a story about how James Johnson did, did an up kick to get the ball from out of the rim. Like a like a karate kid kick. Yeah, I'm not and, and and Bam said that's gonna be my teammate for life. Hey. Remember Serge Ibaka? Yeah. He grabbed James Johnson or James, I'm sorry, James Johnson may have grabbed him and then Ibaka turned around. He's like, oh no. And he was like, bop, bop. I, I but James Johnson would beat the brakes off of anybody in the NBA they said, in a fight. Jeff T said when there was at Georgia Tech. They had an issue. And they were like, man. No, man. man. It was Jay. Jay would have been. Yeah. And then you so, 
James Johnson, while he never had to really be a henchman in the NBA, it's because everybody knew that they did not want to get the shit kicked out of them. Nobody. And Udonis said, I tried to stop him, but once it switched, I let him, let him go. Let him do what they got to do. Because I'm, because I'm, because Udonis has them. Udonis has them. Might be a tough motherfucker. But James Johnson would have put him in the dirt, too. <laughs> so that's my five. Well, I think that was a colorful one. So shout out to all the henchmen and the fighters slash psychopaths of the NBA. We all love you. That being said, we're going to wrap this one up. A little early today, not not necessarily early. We're hitting the hour mark, but we're gonna let end this one with a really great topic. Rudy uh, introduced this topic in pre-production meeting, and I actually want to see where he goes with this because um, someone reminded me the other day. Hey, hey, Don, you know you guys are part of the media now. I said me. No, you guys are part of the media. You got you guys discuss media topics. There are gonna be some people who just don't like what you say it's going to be people who are fans of what you say you're th- you're, you've had viral moments i said who me it was quite shocking but then someone reminded me of my of our collective power and responsibility to not just come on here and just say whatever we want just you know spread misinformation fake lies fake lies we, 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 we want to give our opinions. We want to be biased. We want to be objective. But um, there are some media personalities out there who I think told the line. Some completely crossed the line. Uh, Nick and I have had these conversations for a decade now in sports. Now it's not even about, you know, news. I'm a huge Scott Van Pelt fan because he just gives me the damn news. I don't care about you guys' opinions. I just want the news sometimes. That's it. Just the news. I want, I, I want the news. So, with that being said, we are going to get into, some of you may or may not know it, some of you may know the names, may not know what they're going through, but Stephen A. Smith and uh, Jason Whitlock have had a bit of a back and forth for a couple of years, but it has gotten public, and I, I feel like it's gotten a little ugly and cringy. Um, I haven't done my research to find out what the gripe is from either side, because I just don't care. Um, I'd rather watch HBO, Insecure, shout out to Issa Rae. Uh, you and Lawrence got back together, I'm a fan of that. So with that being said, uh, since Rudy brought it up, I'm going to just, the floor is yours before we exit this amazing show. Yeah, man, um, I, I've been wanting to discuss this, but we were young, so I, I wanted to hold it for a second. But yeah, we're at the point where I watched about a month of Stephen A. Smith and Jason Whitlock going back and forth. And it's entertaining as hell to be honest. However, one guy is flat out lying and the otherwise other guy is checking him on his lies and he doesn't like it. The reality is if you read the book that Stephen A. Smith wrote, he makes lots of statements about his basketball playing career. And it's unnecessary to, to, to have these embellishments or just flat lies because he's been caught in these lies when it comes to how many games he played, if he played, and he goes back and forth about different stories about how he got to Winston-Salem State University, his basketball career in high school. Like there are, I guarantee you, if I asked for a picture of Nick when he played high school basketball, he'd have 50 of them in a second. But yet, when it comes to Stephen A. Smith, you have one headshot that looks like Wilt Chamberlain holding his 100-point sign-up. Because the reality is, he had a very, very short basketball career. And, but he lies about it because when they played a joke on him on ESPN, they put him next to Jalen Rose and JJ Reddick. And they asked Jalen Rose and JJ Reddick whose stats are what. And then the left side, they had Stephen A. Smith's stats, which was like 1.5 points per game. And on the bottom, it said he, it was, uh, he was five for 25 from the field and five for 22 from three point range. This is, I believe, in 1989, around there. Now, 1989 is not that long ago. You People have pictures. <laughs> people have pictures. I mean, I have a yearbook from 1995. And I'm in that yearbook 10 times in my high school yearbook, right? So he comes on and then he says, well, none of that's true because I only played one game. Well, you can't average 1.5 points in one game. It's impossible. 
It's not mathematically possible. And then he later on says in his podcast, I didn't play a game. Okay, so you didn't play a game. You played one game. I can tell you this. I would remember if I played one game or not, if I played college basketball, even for one second. I would never forget it. And I have no reason to lie about it because most people do not play college basketball. So there's no reason to lie about it if you played or you didn't play. Because if you, because the reality is Winston-Salem State has him playing nine games. And he claims that he cracked his kneecap and all these other stories about it. But then he go, but Whitlock calls him out because they have a beef, clearly. And it's just, it's, I think it's sad to see journalists doing this to each other. Um, I find Whitlock to be a very intelligent guy. I think a lot of, I think he calls lots of bullshit on people, but people don't like him because of his political views. Now, he read the book. He did a review of the book and he called out embellishments. He got us, they, like, there was a claim that Stephen A. Smith said that they, he went to a practice, mid practice on a Sunday after a Saturday basketball game. And the coach checks him in and these guys on this team magically start passing him the ball, passing him the ball. And he makes 17 straight three-point shots in 1989. Was he Glenn Rice? Come on. Like Nick played basketball in college. How many guys hit 17 straight three-point shots in a scrimmage? How None, probably. How many guys would come off the street and be checked in to your scrimmage, and then you start giving him the ball, dishing him the ball over and over and over again. He didn't get the ball. He didn't get the ball. <laughs> so the stories are bullshit. They're lies. And they've been caught. And the only thing that man could do, Stephen A. Smith could do, is call Jason Whitlock a fat bastard over and over and over and over again. Yet he never addressed the actual statements. Why are you lying? How many? We know what you played. You played nine games. That's what the school has. There's so many other embellishments in this book of claiming, Don, you're from New York, right? How many places can you can you get from downtown to Harlem in 30 minutes? It's almost impossible. Even with Subway, you can't get there in 30 minutes. Yeah, that's tough. Even on the subway, like there was claims that he got from here to there in 30 minutes. He went from his job or something to school, blah, blah, blah. There's all kinds of things where he's claiming that are logistically impossible. It's like saying I live in Aventura. I'm going to drive to Kendall and be there in 25 minutes. I don't care if it's one o'clock in the morning with no traffic. You're not getting there in 25 minutes. So there's just embellishments. And it's like, I get it. You're trying to sell a book and all that stuff, but you don't need to lie about it. And when you get called out on it, you also shouldn't respond with, you're a fat bastard. Nobody likes you. People don't want to work with you. Blah, 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 blah. That's stupid. It's childish. Because it's the same few people that he will name like Jamel Hill and this and that. They don't like the, they don't like Whitlock. But don't, but you lose credibility as a journalist when you lie. And then you have no response. And as a person who got a degree in journalism, I'm bothered by a way the way a lot of this, the way a lot of journalism goes now. It's not, it, it's just not. And people don't have inte- journalistic integrity with the things that they say. But if you write a book, you better not make stories up because he's now said three different times that he's played this zero one, and uh, he cracked the kneecap. But the stats say he played nine. So which one is it? Why lie? That's my that's my take. That's how I feel. I don't understand it. I don't like it. And you lose credibility, and all you do is yell and. For an, if you watch his response, it was a 45 minutes to an hour nonstop berating of a guy calling him a fat bastard and hey. never answered the question. Hey, I can average 1.5 a game in one game. I shot the free throw. I shot the free throw. Somebody did a line violation. Bump. I'm counting it in my head. They're not really counting it in the books. I averaged it out to 1.5. Bump. That's how you get it. <laughs> I, didn't I, do not, that, that, I do not like what whatsoever. I, I guess Nick, thanks for the statistical breakdown of 1.5 points a game. Yeah. But then he yeah. said he didn't play in a game. He cracked his kneecap before the season ever started. He also yes. said he got a scholarship, which I wonder if that's even true because they had no money at Winston Salem State for a guy who barely played any high school basketball. Like, and you came into work. I, I mean, maybe he walked on. Maybe he was. I, I don't know what's true. And that's what makes his whole story like the whole story. Just seems almost like if Cat Williams knew this dude, I would love to have heard his response. 
I'm not a Whitlock fan. I do not stand him either, bro. But also, I think Stephen A. overdoes a lot of things, but he does it for the ratings. And, and, and understandably so, he gets paid a lot to embellish and do things in that nature. But I'm not mad at Whitlock for calling him out one of the few times. You, you know, you're going to stand on what you stand on. And Whitlock been doing it for a long time and doing it. But I do think Whitlock talks a lot of bullshit. You might say that he's in, in touch. He does. Yeah, he's actually, he's very intelligent, but he does he does talk a lot of shit. But I mean, he and he I mean, you should watch it. You should actually watch it because I watched them all. Stephen A. didn't lie on that one. He is a fat. I mean, maybe I don't know about the bastard part, but he is fat. And if if, if Whitlock was a woman, but you would call him a fat. But you, it's, it's double standards in this world. We all know that. So let's not. So and and if he calls Stephen A. Smith a ball headed bastard, I'm sure Stephen A. Smith would be coming back and forth. Because Whitlock has never cussed to this guy or never called him names. That's the thing. But Whitlock, when you start calling some, Whitlock, Whitlock didn't call him no names. Whitlock is Dennis Rodman. He irritates you. He yes. But if you start if you start cursing him out, you've lost. You, no. You've admitted defeat. No, I didn't. That means I cussed your ass out. You're going to take these cuss words. I don't know what the heck you talk about or where you go from, that's, come that's up from. I think like, this is a good one. That means I'm about to win because I'm about to say this, some real ignorant, nasty Good shit that's gonna make you this feel one like that's the point of cussing your up. <laughs> Nick, can we stay on topic? This this one this one was thought provoking. I think it's going to invoke uh some conversations because it's almost like they're on two separate lines, but it's just I think this one was more about journalistic integrity. If I, am I right, Rudy? That's that's yeah, because because yeah, because when you're writing a book, you can't lie in your book, dude. Like that's just not uh, you're writing a book. I, I mean, we're not we're not we're not turning a book to a movie. We're you're writing the actual book. <laughs> I, mean, I can't wait to write wants to play Stephen A. Smith in a lifetime movie. You what can right now. Who? You. <laughs> wow. Um, with that being said, we're gonna love. I got I got I got one more thing, man. Because I, I if we let it go, it's not gonna have. It's not gonna be. Oh, I got two more things. Really, I'll make it quick. No. Did you watch the Pro Bowl flag football game? Oh, I did not. Did not. Uh, okay, exactly. They have a bull, they have this ridiculous flag football game, so make it makes me know that we're not going to have football for very long because it's become ridiculous. They should cancel that crap. Just ha- name Pro Bowlers and don't have a game. Don't do anything. Just stay home. Give them a vacation. Give them a President's Club vacation or something like that. But they had a competition. And you know who your Pro Bowl quarterbacks were? C.J. Stroud, Baker Mayfield, Gardner Minshew, Tua, Jalen Hurts, and Geno Smith. Those are your six Pro Bowl quarterbacks. I think Ben Roethlisberger could have made this team. Damn. And they had a competition for accuracy. Passing accurate. It was precision passing. Dan Arlovsky in a dress shirt beat them all from ESPN. Nobody said Dan can't throw. No, but these guys are currently playing. Like he's ten years removed, or something like that. He's five years removed Take in a dress shirt. In a dress shirt. In a dress shirt. He out. He beat them all. Get rid of the. First of all, these are not Pro Bowl quarterbacks. Number one, but two, get rid of this crap because this is embarrassing. That that's my that's my first thing. Cancel the whole damn thing. Get rid of it. They should bring back. I like competitions though. I don't have a problem with like like back in the days they used to have who could throw it the furthest. Um, yeah, I like the fast man they used to have. They used to have them racing. Yeah, and I Daryl Green always won that. They probably won't do it now because of pro- oh my hamstring, my hamstring. I pulled a muscle. Yeah. A bunch of soft ass freaking I'm trying to get divas. Back. I'm trying to be in. Yeah. So, but that was the one thing, and I wanted to hit on because I just watching Dan Orlovsky having beaten them. I didn't. I watched like the last five minutes of that flag football game because it was late night and recording of it. I'm like, oh my god! And yet they didn't have Tyree Kill in the game at the end. It's like, what are we doing? <laughs> The 65-game NBA rule. Oh, Last week, I made a comment about Joel Embiid. I said he'd be the MVP if he didn't get hurt. Well, he got hurt. He's out for an extended period of time. What immediately happens, these NBA player divas start whining. They start crying about this new rule. The rule caused him to get hurt because he was probably already hurt before Jonathan Kaminga landed on his knee. By the way, Jonathan Kaminga is bawling since he got the worst haircut in history. And Steve Kerr admitted that he completely ruined, he wasted half of the season. But that that kid is balling, but, crazy. Dude. But we saw in the but, preseason, I don't know why they didn't start mm-hmm. him in the preseason. Like, yeah. I don't know, did they see the move where he hit LeBron with the first step and then finished with two hands at AD? Uh, like, no. uh, I don't know, but he was, the point was that MB was probably already hurt when he landed on his leg, right? 
but they're saying, but someone like Draymond Green is getting on a, on a podcast and crying about how they're making us play this rule. He shouldn't lose awards, lose X, Y, Z because of this game rule. Fellas, your game rule exists because of you. Y'all made this happen. People who buy tickets are sick and tired of watching superstar athletes not play while healthy. It's bullshit. It's tiresome. Stop stealing our money while you're making $50 million a year. It's bogus. And the NBA had to put a stop to it. And you know what? If you're not hurt, you play. But Joel Embiid now is going to miss the whole season. He'll play 40 games all year, 35 games. He should not win MVP if you play 35 games or 40 games. I made a point to do some research here because that's what I do. From nineteen, from 2015 to now, the division of games to reach, I'm not using 82 as, as the number because uh, 65 out of 82 is 79, 2.2%. So I use 79.2 because there are some seasons where there were strike shortened seasons, 50 games, 66 games. So I'm not counting those. If they, as long as they were above 79.2%, mm-hmm. they played enough games. Since 2015, there have been 23 players who have been made all NBA first, second, or third team who played less than 79.2% of, the, of, this, of their games. LeBron, four times. Embiid, twice. Curry, three. Jimmy Butler, three. Kawhi, two. KD, two. Paul George, Kyrie, uh, John Morant, Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons made an all-NBA team. God damn. Dame Lillard, DeMarcus Cousins, and Giannis play, had one. From the inception of the NBA to 2015, 24 players made all-NBA who played less than 79, 79.2% of their games. So you want to know why this rule exists is because you bitch ass players today sit out and don't fucking play. You're paid to play. If you're in a company and you miss half the year, are you going to get an employee of the year award? No, motherfucker. You're going to get fired. The the crazy part is, I don't know. I I mean, I'm part of the era, but I'm not part of the era. But I enjoy playing because you don't know how long you're going to be able to play. So you play as much as you can. Whatever the opportunity arises, you play. But like I told Rudy before, a lot of this is because the media and some and a lot of fans put so much on the player plate that all that mattered was a championship. Well, I don't agree with that either. You know that. All that matters is a championship and your regular season don't matter because you can have a great regular season and you don't play well in the well, you didn't get a championship, That's and that's all that matters. So people are like, well, let me be ready for the playoffs. Let me be ready to win the championship. Let me put my best foot forward at the playoffs. And that's why players stop doing it. I mean, along with Pop, but Pop rested his older players. It wasn't just like Pop was resting young players all the time. Because I'm pretty sure Tim Duncan, Tony Park, and all of them in the younger ages still. They were, the mid- they were in the mid-30s when he was doing that, yeah. Yes, exactly. So I can understand as you get older, but... That kind of started it, but it's the media, people, fans, they made it about championships. Oh, LeBron got, I mean, Jordan got six, and nothing else mattered. LeBron, I don't care that you went to 10 finals. You only won three or four of them. So people like that said, well, fuck the regular season. I'm going to do whatever I can to play in the playoffs and get a championship because that's all y'all care about. But now they're taking away from their money, and now they're going back and forth. They're like, man, play hard through the regular season. That's what everybody needs to do. Play hard during the regular season and still find a way in the playoffs to be great. Because you're going to get a day off in between the games, sometimes two ga- days off. And you got all types of things to get your body back. You got cold tubs. You got massage guns. Like, there's no way that you shouldn't be ready, back, ready for the next game. Um, so... I agree. Like, this rule is perfect. Like you said, fans want to see players, but also fans want to see championships. So that's where the two coincide, and that's where the problem lies. If if you're going to sit out, you don't get awards. That's it. If if, if the playoffs are more important to you than the regular season, and you don't get awards, don't cry about it. Draymond Green also made a comment. Yeah, Jimmy Jimmy already said, I don't care about an award. I want to win a title. So I'm fine with that. Yes. I don't want to hear about anyone saying that stuff. Draymond Green then said, well, you know, we run a lot more up and down the court. Yeah, bro, let me tell you something. If Shaq or any one of these henchmen from the 90s 
were putting dudes on their backs. Every possession, no matter how slow it went, you'd feel it a whole lot more. Ooh. Jordan played 82 games for a decade. Larry Bird, who his back went out, every year he was all NBA. He played 80, 75 to 82 games. He always played. So this mentality, they flew commercial. They were mixed with the common people in the airports. They didn't have the, the luxuries that these guys have today. Yet these guys will sit. Did you see how AD and LeBron sit out versus the Celtics? A nationally televised television game. The rivalry Celtics-Lakers. These two pussies sit out. Yeah, pussies. Because they weren't hurt. Because they magically played the next game against the Knicks. Because they thought they would get their ass kicked against the Celtics. And then their backups basically won the game for them. Austin Reeves went ape shit. D'Angelo Russell went ape shit. They couldn't miss a three. They couldn't make a two, but they couldn't miss a three. And the Celtics were terrible. They win that game. Then they come back to play the Knicks. They beat the Knicks. Yeah, they're missing Julius Randle and whatever. But you, you look like clowns. Because that was a fuck you to Adam Silver, in my opinion, and that rule. Because there's no logical reasoning that anyone who ever understands the Lakers Celtics would ever sit out that game on purpose unless they were badly messed up. Because that rivalry is a rivalry forever. LeBron's 40. He's 39, but because I I remember 39 to 40, there was a difference. I can tell you that my body felt a little bit different a year later. Um, (laughs) But that's just my feeling. You they they get all the freaking benefits of travel. They don't have back to backs really. They don't play four and five nights. They've had the season ex- changed and extended to spread out the games, and they still bitch and complain. So I don't want to hear Draymond Green whining. Look, if a guy gets hurt, you know what? It sucks. It happens. It happens. It sucks. I feel bad for the guy that misses 17, 18, 18 games because he was really injured and he played every other game after that in 64 that he could play, he played. But that's not what's happening here. Because guys are sitting out for 10, 12 games a season, on average, the stars, for rest. And then when they get a ding or a, they get dinged, they miss another five or 10, and now they miss, they're at, they're at 60 and 58. Like, a guy playing 55 games should not make an all-NBA team, period. No. That's just my thought. I'm good. I had to get that off because I just, I, 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 it bugs me because like Nick said, Nick is now retired, but if he didn't have to be retired, he wouldn't be retired. That's my guess. I can still get it wrong. Get it, don't get it wrong. Don't get it wrong. Don't get it wrong. Well, and uh, Rudy, thank you. You got that off your chest. I think you feel better. I feel better. Uh, that being said, guys, we're going to wrap up another colorful episode. Uh, come on now. We have a very big surprise for you guys in a few weeks. We're going to have our first guest. We're, gonna, we're super excited about that. So you guys tune in for that. Um, as I said, at all times, we're going to be thought-provoking. We're going to be entertaining. Next week, I promise to you guys, my hair is going to be back lavish. And we're going to continue entertaining you. Nick, I see your face. You need to stop doing that. They're going to think that I look like this on the regular. Uh, with that being said, I'm 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 Don. I'm tuning out. The guys, your final words before we exit out this wonderful episode. Man, it's been a great talk. Um, I'm just gonna tell y'all that me and Rudy expect to see us in a couple of days because the trade deadline is looming. What's gonna happen? Who's getting traded? It's it's here. So by the time this airs. The trade deadline will be popping. Maybe, maybe not. It's tomorrow. Yeah. So we might have something else to say. All depends. It might be nothing. It might be a quiet day, but we'll see. Nick, real quick, who's your pick for the Super Bowl? Who's the, the, ga- the gambler the gamblers needs your opinion. <laughs> um I'm not going against Patrick Mahomes. I I said, Lord, give me strength. Please let the 49ers win. But I'm never betting against Patrick Mahomes ever again. Last week, or two weeks ago, I put up $2 because that's all I could afford. I bet $2 on Lamar Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens. I lost. The week before that, I came in here 
and I said the Bills were going to beat the Chiefs. I said they're going to beat the Chiefs. And then when push came to shove, I got on that betting app, and I put my $5 on my homes. I sure did. I sure damn did. $12 payout plus $7. Got me a Slurpee. Well, I got I got the Niners 27-17. Um, so we'll see. But uh, thank you, everyone, again. We appreciate your support. And um, remember to like, subscribe, follow us, share us. You know, we're trying to make this thing big and, and bring you the, the best content. We do have some things coming up that are going to be really, really exciting. Um, you know, and uh, make sure you check out all of our shorts that we're posting up because to get you excited and, you know, me annihilating Nick every time in an argument, that's what I do. You know, he can roll his eyes. But uh, thank you, everybody. You know, we appreciate it. Like, subscribe, and all the details are in the in the description below. So, you know, Don, take it away, brother. All right, guys. And I know you know this by now. I were unstoppable every week. This is my brand. I will be bringing it back. So it'll be popping soon enough. That being said, guys, you guys be safe. Watch it. Post it. Repost it. Whatever you young kids do, you TikTokers. We'll see you next week. Have a good night.